This series is brought to you by you. Thank you so much for all of my patrons and the people who have used the Jackson's affiliate links. It is thanks to you guys that this series have been made possible. Thank you so much. Welcome back to Closer Color Showdown. This is episode four and we're going to continue taking a look at Ceridian Blue. And first up, we have the gradated washes. And another thing that I need to apologize for is with the ultramarine violet, I made a mistake and made three sections of gradated wash, whereas I normally in this series, certainly in season one, I do it in four parts. I was just a little bit overwhelmed starting a new series after taking such a long time off making videos and I made a few mistakes in that episode so I do apologize for that and I hope that it hasn't ruined your viewing experience. I am back to doing four sections in terms of gradated washes and what we're looking for is a nice even gradation but also clear sections to show you that you have a really good control over how gradated something's gonna be rather than something like the core one which you have the mass tone and then you can't even tell that there was four, three other sections here it just blurs and the problem with that is when if you're trying to do a nice gentle gradated wash you're gonna really struggle with that and i feel the same with things like the mary mary blue you really don't see the gradation, nor does Da Vinci, nor does the Holbein one. If you want clear segmentation, I would say pick Sennelier one. You get nice four stages. M. Graham one's not bad either. And also the Daniel Smith one. It's very, very subtle. What I also love about doing the gradated wash is that the granulation tends to come out more once you take a step from the mass tone you get the heavy granulation happening in around about this section you see here and here and you really get to appreciate how granulating some of these colors are if you are not keen on granulation as much but you still love the color i would say colors like mary mary blue the core one and roman smart da vinci does a little bit of granulation but not as strong as the old holland or daniel smith or the windsor newton so it just depends on what how much granulation you want in your painting and then we have these two again the hues that behave completely differently to everyone else and i'm still mad about it i especially the mission golf for not calling it a hue it it's not a granulating color. Taylor blue is not a granulating color and it should give you nice four clear stages because Taylor blues are actually quite good at gradations. In terms of hues though, I have to say that the Schmincke one does a lot better job of matching the other Cerulean blues to the Mission Gold. The Mission Gold, the Mastone's too dark, whereas here you can kind of see what color it was trying to copy, like the M. Graham and the Core. It's pretty similar so if you have to go for the hue for any reason that, that you can't use a cerulean blue or ceruleans are a lot more expensive than the hue colors so if you want a cheaper version then maybe go for the Schmincke. although i would say that if you just want a cheaper version then use your thalo blue green shade tube and maybe add a little bit of white maybe i don't even think you need to in terms of cauliflowering there's not too much there's this here with the old holland but i would also argue that this isn't i mean this is cauliflower but it's in a really interesting way that you could totally use for something i can kind of see like an upside down or if i do it this way like trees and things happening so it's really interesting more than it gets it in your way you can definitely work with that all the other colors don't really color flower i had some water patches here but on the whole there's not much color flowering that can happen with the genuine cerulean blue colors on to the salt test here we are with the cerulean there was two things that i wanted to mention well, two colors that I wanted to mention. One is Sennelier and one is Old Holland. 
I always paint the test sheets in the morning and then I will leave it to dry overnight and I come in the next day and I scrape the salt off and I've never really had a problem with paint not drying in that time but with the Snellier and Old Holland it was still wet when I came to scrape the paint off so that might be something to consider if you do use a lot of salt that it's really going to mess around with your drying time. And that's why you get these bare patches and a scrape mark. It's when I went over the paint with my palette knife to scrape the salt off, not realizing that it wasn't fully dry. It looked dry until I scraped it. So definitely these two are gonna be a little bit more tricky in terms of using salt. In terms of reaction, well, yeah, the Thalo Blues, I would expect for it to react to salt, but leaving that behind, I would say that Marimelo Blue does some awesome smaller but definitely reaction. It's like little tiny snowflakes, it's really cute reaction that has a um, huge variance in the value. So it goes all the way back to white. Windsor Newton does react but it's less of a difference in value. So Roma Small also does a nice job of reacting to salt. It's tiny, tiny. So Reaction. I love how, depending on the watercolour, the amount of reaction you get is so different because you get the little tiny, really fragile details here and then you get nice big details on a Thalo Blue. But I would say that if you are using salt with Cerulean Blue, then expect very small, detailed, tiny, tiny reaction rather than the big reactions that you get in the Thalos. I would say that Daniel Smith, Core, and Da Vinci didn't really react that much to salt. So if you do use salt, I wouldn't really bother with those, especially the Daniel Smith one. It did absolutely nothing. The, you, all you see is where the granules of salt had sat on the paper. I would say I really like the Mary Mary blue one and the Roman Schmoll one. They look like little frosts, ice things on the window in the winter. Very, very delicate. And then we come to the color mixes and for the complementary color of cerulean blue is vermilion hue or like a reddy orange color and then we have the yellow magenta and cyan as always cerulean blue you should expect it to be low tinting in general and that's true for a lot of these brands, as you can see. This is the other problem of using something like Thalo Blue in a hue color of a Cerulean Blue, is that it's way too high tinting strength compared to the other colors. So let's say you have softer, more natural pigment based palette like ultramarine violets and cobalt violets and stuff and then you buy yourself a mission gold cerulean blue and you get this tinting strengths instead of something more like this then it's really going to mess you up in terms of mixing colors because it's just going to be all wrong and that colors you mix with this color is going to stand out way more than the other colors this is why you need to be careful with what you buy like don't go just by the name of the color. If it's a particular thing you're looking for, then you need to figure out the pigment code and make sure that that brand actually gives you the pigment code it should be giving you. So I would say these two are way too high tinting strength for it to be comparable to the other colors. In terms of the actual Cerulean Blues, the highest tinting one, I would say, was the coarse one. And mixing it with these really strong colors, I found that job a lot easier to do with the Cerulean Blue Chromium from Core. So if you have strong quins and thalos, then definitely consider getting something higher tinting strengths like the Core. I would say that if I were to pick another one, then maybe the M. Graham one is pretty high tinting strengths as well, but not as much as Core. The low tinting strengths ones were Daniel Smith, Saint-Hilaire, Windsor Newton, Roman Small, and Da Vinci, but do expect Cerulean just in general to be a low tinting strengths color. I would say get Cerulean Blue if you're looking to mix nice soft colors and your palettes are nice soft low tinting strengths in general 
whereas I don't have cerulean blue in my palette because I have these really strong colors on my palette and it would really struggle. However, I have to say, the beauty of cerulean blue is when you start mixing with other colors and you get all this granulation with the blue coming out from the other colors. So if you're into the dual tone kind of colors where you get a very clear separation of one color from the other within a mix, then cerulean blue is an excellent color to go for on your palette. So what do I think of these colors? Well, first of all, I want to address the hues. And the reason why I chose the hues, apart from sticking to the premises of this series, which is to choose color by its color name rather than by pigment code, it's interesting to also take a look at how well the hues compare to the genuine colors. And I would say that with the Schmincke one, certainly, it's a little bit strong. You need to definitely water it down a lot. But in terms of hue, especially when we do things like the gradation, let's grab the gradation. It's a lot closer, certainly, to some other ones than the Mission Gold one is. So if you have to go for the hue for any reason, then I would say go for the Schmincke. But as I said before, you could just easily water down phthalo blue, yellow shade or green shade and maybe add a little bit of white and you will get the same result. The only thing is these colours are not granulating, whereas cerulean blue is known for their granulation. So you're missing out on that granulation if you go for the hue colours. I would say that the worst paint out of all of this is the Mission Gold because, as I said before, it should say hue and it doesn't. At least Schmincke's one is honest with you and it will tell you that it's a hue. In terms of the genuine colours, I still can't get over how bad this one smelt. It's definitely even worse than the Ultramarine Violet. Do let me know if you have this and, and you'll smell really bad. I can't face painting with this colour again no matter how good or interesting it might be and it is interesting if you can get over the smell or if you find a tube that doesn't smell or the smell doesn't bother you then it does do some really interesting things like again with the granulation the gradation then you get these really interesting viney patterns and when you mix it with other colours you get this beautiful pattern of the granulation so I'm not saying don't go for old holland but be prepared to be for it to smell bad in terms of other colors the Daniels may sense earlier if you are using lower quality watercolor paper or a non-cotton watercolor paper then i would advise you against using daniel smith's or Sennelier just because it goes some very streaky if you want a nice even coverage without too much hassle, I would definitely recommend Holbein. However, don't forget with Holbein that it doesn't do that good a job in terms of gradated washes that give you a good control. Core, again, it really does not give you any control of how your paint is going to be gradated. So if you do a lot of gradation, then you definitely need to pick ones that behave better like the Snellier and the M Graham one and also bear in mind that there is variation in the hue so the Winsor Newton Old Holland is a little bit more yellow and the Mary Mary Blue one is a little bit more thalo turquoisey kind of color and actually cerulean blue is just a really interesting color to explore all the different variation because there's so many and a lot of the brands offer other alternative colors that are also cerulean based so if you like your blues and you like your granulating light blues, then definitely check out the other colours. What do I think? Well, I mean, I don't use cerulean blue that much in my own painting, but if I do use it, it's to mix it with other colours to create these really interesting textures that happen. And in terms of that, I think they're about the same the ones that do show the granulation, which is a Dan Smith, Holbein, Sennelier, Windsor Newton, and Old Holland, and a little bit of Roma Small as well. Other brands like M. Graham, Mary Mary Blue, Core, they don't show up the difference in the colors, 
quite so well so i would definitely stick to one of these five and obviously i'm not personally gonna go for the old holland because i can't stand the smell between these i would say probably not sennelier because the sennelier is incredibly easy to wear all the ones with honey the sennelier M. Graham, Roma Small and Old Holland are very easy to rewear. Re However, the Snellier one was kind of too easy to rewear and I ended up using a lot of paint even though I did the exact same amount of tests with that colour. Because I don't have any honey-based colours on my palette, it's just a bit jarring to have such an easy to rewear paint that I stick my brush into and it just goes all the way in kind of thing. So probably not Snellier. I would probably go for either the Daniel Smith or the Holbein and between these two I would pick Holbein just because it's a little bit more high in tinting strength than the Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith has barely any tinting strength and that's going to cause me problems on my palette with really strong colours. However, if you have less strong colours on your palette then pick any of these and you'll have a great. So that's my personal choice is the Holbein. Although I'd be quite happy to go for the Windsor Newton as well, apart from the fact that, again, it's a little bit low tinting strength. It just really depends on what you're looking for. And I'd be really fascinated to know which one was your favourite colour out of these brands. And did you start off with one colour that was your favourite and changed your mind about it? Do let me know in the comments below which one is your favourite one and which one you're going to go for. And if this video has helped you pick a colour to buy, then if you can use the affiliate link down below, that helps this channel so much because it doesn't cost you anything extra, but Jackson gives me a commission, which means it's a free way to financially support this channel. If you've enjoyed the colours we've discussed in this video and you want to try some of the colours out yourself at home, then this month's Patreon exclusive dot card is the companion dot card to this episode. It is the Cerulean Blue dot card. You get Daniel Smith, Holbein, Schmincke, Sennelier, Winsor Newton, Core, M. Graham, Mission Gold. It's a great affordable way to try out eight different colors without having to buy eight whole tubes, which is super expensive to do, especially with cerulean blue because they are more expensive. And every penny of the affiliate money goes straight back into buying more paints for this channel so that I can bring you more colors to test. If you'd like to receive this dot card, then all you have to do is head on over to patreon.com forward slash autocano and sign up to the appropriate tiers because we have several tiers that include the dot card. Thank you so much for everyone that signs up to receive this dot card because your support goes straight into making this series possible. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed taking a good look at Cerulean Blues. Do let me know in the comments down below what you thought about it. And in the next episode, we're going to be taking a close look at Green Gold. So do join me for that. For now, thank you so much for watching this video and I will speak to you in the next video. Bye!